had the pleasure of meeting was Paula Enlow. Good morning, Paula. Good morning. And you have written a new book. And what makes it unusual for us is that we don't have a lot of local authors here that are published. And you are. Well, we got some authors. We don't have any authors. I was going to say, Jeff, is that like Arthur, like the oldest man in town? You, know, you guys really love to throw rocks. So. Can't get a word in it. I'll tell you what. Can't even mispronounce anything anymore. It's just, it's just terrible. I mean, look at look at President Trump. He gets beat up every day. Yeah. Anyway, I want to, I want to thank you, uh, uh, Paula, for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. And I want you to uh, tell us about your book. Well, it wasn't something that was planned. It was, it just evolved. By the way, it's entitled Lessons from My Mirror. Yes. I think pronounced all those properly. Your mirror? Yeah, mirror. You're exactly sorry, right. Paula. Tell us about your book. Tell us about your book. I'm enjoying this. Thank you. I'm glad you are. <laughs> I, I told Vanessa I'm so glad that she has that little coffee shop because it's right on my way to Cleveland and I can stop by and write and drink coffee or tea and that's, I think it's very needed in Cleveland. It so is. thank you. I'm excited about coming there. Um, this book, uh, as I, I was saying, it just evolved. It's not something I ever thought I would be is an, a published author, A-U-T-H-R author. <laughs> As a published author, she knows how to write it. That's right. <laughs> um, and I'm not a creative writer. I'm just, uh, I basically, I just write about the facts. I work for an attorney, and so that's basically, that's just me. And so this book just happened from actual notes that I put on my mirror, post-it notes about some lessons that I needed to learn in life and some changes I need to make in my, in my own personal life. Sounds like a good time of the year to read this book with a New Year's resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeez. lessons from your mirror, are there, the lessons are from the post-it notes book. As opposed to what you're seeing reflected in the mirror. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I. Because when I look in my mirror, I just say, man, you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to look in the mirror at all, actually. Anymore. Mine is covered with post-it notes, so. That's what I need that to cover my post-it notes. That would help me out. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> about, when I turned about 50, and so. Um, Last week. <laughs> not long ago. And, um. I thought, you know what? I've been making some of the same mistakes over and over. You get you get to that point, just like you were saying about the first of the year. You look back and you think, you know what? I need to make some changes. And so I thought, why do I keep doing, making these same mistakes? I said, it's going to have to change with me. There is a quote on the back of the book by C.S. Lewis that says, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. And that's where I was at. I was like, let me change my ending. And... You know, I quoted that in my sermon this week. There you go. Where are you pastor at? That Rural Shade Baptist Church of Tarkin. Okay. That wasn't my credit. Awesome. I didn't give C.S. Lewis any credit for it, Dawson. <laughs> Hey, by the way, before you go any further, I want to say congratulations. Today's your 40th wedding anniversary. Yes, it oh, is. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank well, congratulations. You. Yeah. Now, that's not so one of the changes you want to make. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, you did something right, so it's gone for 40 years. Yes, <laughs> yes. So you think you're going to keep him or <laughs> throw him back for a new fish? That might be in my next bit. Yeah. So we'll see. It's on one of those post it notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's a good way for a husband to get communication with his wife. You walk in, you look in the mirror, and she's got post-it notes on there for what you should do. What yeah, you read the book. Do. What I'm struggling with. Okay, this is That's what I'm struggling with. I wish my wife yeah. would put her emotions on a post-it note. That would really help me out. Oh yeah. That's all. I was uh, looking at your book here in the table of contents, and uh, there's a list of 17 items here. Uh, that look like uh, you've you've uh, done some introspection about yourself and gone through these particular. Um, well, I would call them uh, 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 things that are quite you know problems that all of us have versus uh, some joy that a lot of us have. And uh, and I, I won't read them off a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but 
from number one, you talked about mistakes and courage and gratitude and influence and choices. These are all things that everybody goes through in their life. And uh, I, I, I suspect uh, we could use a different perspective, like someone like you that's uh, written about this. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your first chapter. You were talking about mistakes. Uh, how did that? How did you come about uh, starting off with that, and then how did that progress and evolve into what you what you actually wrote? When I first started posting my notes, on each note is a quote or a word of inspiration, uh, like this pastor said, you know, some kind of inspirational comment, quote, message that inspired me that day or I, or helped me in something that I was working on. And I said, I'm going to put this up here every morning. I'm going to see this. I'm not only going to read it. I'm going to apply it. And so if I had been struggling with something about an issue of jealousy or uh, needing uh, others' approval over who I am, I focused on that for that day. I said, that's not going to affect me today. I'm going to overcome that with this quote. And, I, and all of a sudden, they just started building different quotes um, about different things that I was working on. And one day I was driving with my 11-year-old niece. She's riding to church with me, and she looked at me. We were just having conversations. She looked at me, and she says, Aunt Paula, what do you do when you've done something and you, you've repented of it, but you just can't get, get it out of your mind? And it just floored me because that's exactly what I was working on. Things that I had done that I had that I was trying to work on, but they just kept coming to my mind that that's who I was. And so I began to tell her about how I was overcoming the things that I was struggling with. And as I talked to her and told her, there were three things that it takes to overcome and the first thing is everyone makes a mistake not anyone here today has not made a mistake only Brad no Brad's made a lot of mistakes already today <laughs> that's not true you want to already have today. a call in show my wife will let you know all about it uh. <laughs> and the second thing is whatever happened is done whatever she did you can't change it. We can't change it. We can't go back and do it. Do it over. It's done. Accept it. Repent of it. Try to make it right if you can. And then get back up. Those are the ways that you handle mistakes, trying to overcome them and be a better person. That mistake does not make you who you are. You're not the mistake. You're the overcomer of that mistake. And you're here to help someone else overcome that. That's what we're all here for. You're all here today, you know, helping promote a book, helping promote a business, helping make this community better. You're here for a reason. Every one of us have a reason. Every one of us have a purpose. And when my niece got out of the car, she hugged me real big and said, Thank you, Aunt Paula. And when she walked out of that car, she was standing upright. She was walking with confidence. Her 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 mistake hadn't changed. It was still there. Whoever it was, she needed to apologize to, or whatever she did, it was still there. But she was changed. And that's why the subtitle of my book is "Lessons from a Mirror." Change begins with me, because it absolutely begins with each of us individually. And Paul, Paul gave me a copy of the book at the last chamber meeting, and I've uh, been reading it. It's a very, very faith-based book. I understand that. It's faith in Jesus Christ and, and what he does in your life. And uh, it's not the kind of book you're just going to pick up and just read through and go, well, it's a book you kind of pick up and you got to put down a minute and go, hey... Let, let me think about this. Let me process this a little bit. And I think more of us need to do that. And, and one of the things that I tell people, I said, uh, God never said, you know, that, that he was going to change my past. He just said he's going to forgive it. Absolutely. And I would imagine, uh, and I, would, I won't direct this toward Brad and Carl, but probably one of the biggest problems that you have in your ministry is having people people having introspection about who they are and what they're really uh, well, maybe knowing what the word introspection means yeah, well uh, well 
you know what it means, but uh, looking inside, like she said, you know, uh, finding out what, who you are and what, what, what you do with your life. Well, I'm looking at your book here, and of course it is, uh, it's all around basically recovering from wrong choices, mistakes, uh, failures, setbacks, that kind of thing. And in the back, you have posted some of your mirror notes. And I, just to give folks a taste of what it's about, I, I think some of these are really good. I'm going to read a couple. Uh, from John Sinclair, failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Failure is not permanent. Right. You can overcome that. And here's a, here's a great one. Broken crayons still color. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can go on. And then here's another one from Laurie Jean uh, Senat, I guess. It says, every flower must go through dirt. <laughs> so you get a little dirty uh, to become a flower. And those are things, and as we were talking about introspection, uh, faith in Christ, all of those things kind of come together, I think, uh, you know, uh, to make our lives better. And uh, I appreciate the fact that you've written this down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And this book is not general. It's not generalized. Like, when you make a mistake, you can overcome this. It was raw and transparent mistakes that I made. Gossiping. Judging others. Uh, trying to be something that I was not. Trying to compare myself to others and be like them instead of being who I was. It's a short book. It's only 85 pages, and the chapters are like three pages long, like Brother Carl was saying. You know, you, I have had people tell me they have literally had to sit it down and think about it because it was so real to them. Now, Paula, where do you live? In Plum Grove. In Plum Grove. I've lived in Cleveland all my life. Uh, she, now, she has a famous brother that if you don't know, her brother is a guy named Ralph Fuller, which is our... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, well, well, Ralph, Ralph, she's Ralph. much better looking than him. Yeah. <laughs> this book came out uh, about the time of his uh, re-election, and I texted him and I said, uh, just so you know, uh, you're in my book. <laughs> he said, oh, there goes my career. <laughs> well, I wanted to recommend to you that... Uh, uh, Certainly, uh, Cleveland Library uh, hosts these kind of things, but uh, the Tarkington Community Library Association uh, is going to be having a banquet at the end of this month. January, yeah, sixth of January. Uh, and uh, last I heard, they were looking for some authors to come and participate in the banquet, sign books, and uh, you can get in touch with Casey out at the Tarkington Community Library, and I'm sure she will fix you up. I will certainly do that. I have a book signing coming up on. The 18th at the Cleveland City Library okay. from four to six. And if, if somebody wants to buy this book, how, how do you go about doing it? I have copies uh, here, uh, and I'm also on Amazon. They're twelve dollars on on Amazon. They also are on Kindle. I am in the process of also creating an audio book. Oh, cool. Can I get Ralph to read that for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not do that. <laughs> no, go. Uh, Jay made a comment or made a question that, that here's what my experience as a pastor has been. Most people are afraid to reflect. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Just like your niece. What do I do with it when I do this? What do I do when I... And this book, I think, for people who are kind of trying to unpack some baggage or get, move on, um, be a big help because it just it deals with some real... You know, uh, I would say... They're not unique problems. It's problems we all have. So, so you, you can download this book off the uh, Amazon or Kindle and read it on your iPad or your iPhone. Or I would wish that a lot of uh, teenagers would read this book. It's very easy read. I'm not a... Uh, I, don't, I use a lot of big words. I'm very simple in how I talk. And um, I think... Because I think... If I'd have known this 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that it may help me. Maybe if I can help someone else at a younger age and realize that just because they've made some mistakes, they are not a mistake. And they have a purpose. And follow your own purpose, not someone else's. Yeah, well, knowing about forgiveness is very therapeutic. Uh, for people that uh, are depressed or they're uh, having problems with their life, they know that 
you know, I've, I've done something wrong here, but, uh, you know, knowing that they can be forgiven and it lessens that burden on them and gets rid of a lot of that, that problem. Yes, sir. Not only just being forgiven, I'm so thankful for that, but forgive your own self right. and get past it. That's one thing. We hold on to those mistakes right. and we allow those mistakes to create us instead of us make letting that mistake be used to create you. Turn it to good. Turn it to help someone else. Yes, yeah, so I got a lot. Of, uh, I, I've told uh, young people that you know may have an anger problem. So you know the, the uh, problem with anger is it, it's 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 not it's not the anger. It's you. It's the way you deal with it. You know, if you can take that anger and that energy from that anger and do something productive with it instead of getting you know destroying something, uh, you're better off using that energy from it to do that. Uh, so. Uh, a lot, a lot of folks, uh, in the course of this day and time, we a lot of angry people out there. <laughs> and, yeah. and if they could do, do something with it, it uh, certainly would help a lot more than just getting angry and being destructive. Yes, and jealousy. Uh, as Just as you said, jealousy doesn't really have an emotion. You realize you're jealous when you lashed out at someone. Right. And those things you don't really want to say you have. I don't I'd rather, it's easier to say, to me it's easier to say I have a, I had a problem with the, uh, addiction over some kind of drugs or something like that to say, oh, this book is about, I overcame jealousy, I was petty, I was, I was envious. Those things are hard to say when you're trying to uh, tell someone what you've had to overcome. But it's also, the last part of my journey of this book is about my husband's in our journey through his cancer that he had. He was diagnosed with stage four on husband's bump. And um, for two years, he had, we went through that as he went through chemotherapy and overcame that. And that's the last lesson that is under book. Paul, well, I want to thank you for being a guest today. It's uh, going to be an interesting read for everybody. Thank you for your book. It's five stars on Amazon, by the way. Hey. That will tell you something right there. Congratulations. I know four of the people who gave, who gave you five stars. There's a lot of people who would love to, to, to write a book. And I, I've thought about it through the years. But I could never I could never put so many, that many words together. Like, well, spelling would be your problem. Uh, that'd be one. Well, you got to spell check. Or you got to spell check. It's my later. problem, Jeff. I, I, my name is Brad, and I can't spell. <laughs> but uh, I hope you'll come back and be a guest again. And I, I know that if you wrote one, you're going to write another one. Uh, Thank you so much. Another book in the process. In my mind, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Inlow, she uh, wrote the, the book Lessons from Maya Mira, and uh, I know it's going to do well. Thank you, Paula.